Welcome back, vintage friends. Brent Cook here. Recently, I uploaded a Galvanic Relay Paradoxal Outcome Vintage video that you can find in the card above. And I'll be honest, that overperformed my expectations for a vintage video. So I am back to record vintage once again and show you what I would actually play at Eternal Weekend. I don't know if I'm going to be able to play a vintage Eternal Weekend online, so I figured I can go ahead and release this. And if I am able to play Sweet, but I kind of doubt it at this point. So I am looking to play Grixis Tinker Breach Blue Tinker, whatever you want to call it. This is sort of the list that I've been playing for the last year. I actually gave my deck list to Alex McKinley last year, who then went and won the first online Eternal Weekend on Friday night. So since then, we've made some adjustments. I'm here to talk about some of those today. So the first is I've gone down to Volcanic Island plus a fetch land. The last few times that I've played this deck, I've sort of felt a little bit awkward on colors, and I understand how important lands are that tap for mana in a format where shops is a viable strategy. I completely get that, but I think color consistency matters a lot, but also plays into our Underworld Breach, which, you know, that's quite nice too, so having more cards to escape really does matter. The next card is Opposition Agent. We're actually playing two of these in the main deck. A lot of other lists are playing four Hull Breachers in the main, sometimes even without Time Twister. Those lists, I've played them they're clunky like that's the best way to describe them they are clunk monsters so why would i go up to two opposition agent well i cut narset which is kind of wild but narset's been cut the suggestion came from ryan wallagora winged hassar and that's that narset isn't really great the matchups you want it for it often eats a lightning bolt gets attacked by creatures or simply pyroblasted there's very few times that it feels like it locks the game out meanwhile Opposition Agent is really difficult to remove, so you can't attack it, you can't Pyroblast it, yes you can bolt it, but a lot of the time it's going to really dominate the Urza Saga Mirrors, as well as, you know, pick off Vampiric Tutors, Fetch Lands, whatever you've got. So it's going to make our combo deck more consistent because you can use it as a pseudo hidden tutor, and I think that's really interesting. We're playing Dress Down today over a Lightning Bolt, I just think that... The Saga decks have picked up so much steam that you probably want this to break the mirror open. So we're playing that today. Um, but I mean, for the most part, I've played this deck a number of times over the last year. The deck hasn't changed that much. And if you haven't watched my videos in over the last year, Preordain is a sort of staple that I discovered. I don't want to say discovered. Uh, that I focused on when I built my deck list last year that Alex McKinley won with. So I played the four Hull Breacher piles and I really did not enjoy them uh, because a lot of your deck is two card Monty, right? Like you have Tinker and you have Blossom Citadel. You have two Breaches, one Brain Freeze. You have one Time Vault, one Key, and then a whole bunch of broken cards in between. But a lot of the times your, your draws would be inconsistent. They wouldn't have a coherent game plan. And I hated that. So when I added four preordain to the deck, everything started to glue together. They started to meld better. And I've really enjoyed playing. Like, I don't even think preordain's that good in Legacy. But in Vintage, when all of your cards are one-ups, I think it does have the consistency that a lot of these decks need. So I am playing four copies of preordain. Uh, those could be your four Hull Breachers if you want to play that list. Uh, just be aware that it's a lot more high variance. That's all. Uh, today I've moved the Sphinx of the Steel Wind to the sideboard and cut the Blightsteel uh, Colossus all together. A number of people commented on my videos that I don't need Blightsteel anymore and that Citadel can get the job done on its own in game one. We're going to find out today. Uh, I love my Blightsteel Colossus, I really do, but perhaps they're correct and I want to give it a fair try because if I didn't, what kind of content creator would I be, right? So that's what we're looking to do today. And Really, the big thing since the last time that I played Vintage is that Hogak has made a huge resurgence. So today, I've been playing for Leyline for a little bit now, but we're going to play two Tabernacles in the sideboard. I believe in the last video I tried out one. Today, we're back to two just to see how that goes. Three copies of Needle in the 75 as well. Friendly reminder. If you did not know this, this month in the month of December, if you become a member of this channel, which you can do by clicking the Join button down below, fun fact, you can watch all videos early. Doesn't matter if you're the $50 tier or the $5 tier. It's my thank you from me to you for all of the support over the last year. Our channel literally doubled in size this year. I love that. So uh, I really do appreciate everyone's support, all that good stuff. But for now, I want to hop on in and play some vintage Magic the Gathering. I'll see you in the first match. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first round. I am I have no idea what our opponent's playing. I'm not gonna bother looking up uh, opponent's deck names this league. So here we have Black Lotus, Soul Ring, Time Walk, Key, and Saga. I'm kind of tempted to keep this. It might not be good enough in a lot of matchups, but I want to see how Time Walk uh, Saga plays out here. This is and is sort of uh, just an experiment for me personally to see if we can get there on the back of Saga alone. Black Lotus, powerful card. They sacrifice the Lotus. Bring Mana Vault. So we're facing Paradoxical Outcome. In the last video I played, I believe four of my five rounds were the PO Mirror. So the, the leagues are just flooded with PO. That's what it would seem like for me. Map. Is this Shops? Valerian Academy. Okay. They have three in hand with six available mana. They're going to use the map. Sure. They grab a Mishra's Workshop, Sphere Resistance. A little bit annoying. Okay, so they have a Workshop in hand and two other cards. We'll take a draw. Tinker is a good one. I really wish I had a big fatty in my deck right now. Holy moly. Um, I guess we can just go get key. Or not key. Um, vault. So how do I do this? Uh, we'll play Black Lotus. I think there's a line here. We'll do Soul Ring. So if I play key, I can't untap the Soul Ring. I guess I'll time walk. We'll take a draw. Saga goes up to two. Play the volcanic. Play the key. Untap the soul ring. Pass the turn. So the mana vault will trigger twice on their turn. It triggers once in their upkeep and once in their draw step. So the untap trigger happens in the upkeep. The damage trigger happens in the draw step. They take one. And now we know that, ooh, they had a shop. So we're going to get our Saga eaten here. Might as well make a construct. We'll grab a 3-3 three, three on its way out. Now they can cast a spell that costs one. So we can play Tinker here. You can get the Time Vault. But if they have their one of Needle, it kind of bites me. Tinker sacrifice the Soul Ring. Time Vault. Go. They'll take a damage off their mana vault. We know that they still have the Mishra's Workshop in hand. And a concession. Beautiful. Workshops. All right. Vintage is the only format that I do pile view in. It's just too hard to see otherwise. Definitely want the Hercules. Lightning Bolt. The Sphinx. And then the Needles. All right. So Mental Misstep can come out. Same thing with Fluster Storm. Don't need Pyroblast, so we can get rid of those. It leaves us at 62. You could board out the agents here. They're only good against Saga itself. I think that might be the play. You could also look to board out the Breach combo, so you could board out the Brain Freeze and both Breaches, but I don't think there's really anything here that I'd want to keep in my deck, so I'm going to click Submit. This is a Magic the Gathering Hand. Keep. Heard that Ancestral card was pretty decent. It's also hard to be upset at Double Force of Will when you're on the draw against shops. In some vintage dating in some vintage videos dating back like over a year. Uh Spyglass, sure. You can add that trash card. Um dating back over a year, there were some videos where I played Force Negation for a variety of decks like Doomsday, but like one of the things that I liked about it a lot was you could also board it in against shops. And I mean, it's a real thing. Uh, just like having more pitch counters to stop their turn one mock pieces. We'll just play the island and pass. 
Urza Saga, sure thing. You have a Soul Ring. They have four cards in hand now. I will Ancestral Recall in response to Sphere. Hmm. I think I'm supposed to force pitch fours. It stinks that we drew... I mean, I'm not going to complain about Lotus uh, Underworld Breach, but it wasn't that good. We'll take another draw. Key. So this is sort of the two-card Monty thing that I was talking about. Let's see if we can improve with the Preordain here. I think I'm going to keep the Ponder. Let's put the pedal on the bottom. Let's fetch. So I could go Black Lotus for blue, play Underworld Breach, Ancestral Floating, one. Hmm. Maybe that's the play. Play out the Lotus. Play the Breach. And now we will Ancestral Recall ourselves again, removing the non-Black Lotus cards. Draw three. Can't cast this time walk. Ponder. I mean, the problem here... I mean, I'm going to keep this, but the problem is... We don't really do much if I pitch the, uh, the Preordain to the Force. So I think you almost have to get rid of the time walk. The Breach dies, and we'll discard Misty Rainforest. They play a Mishra's Workshop. Three cards remaining in hand, but they can also activate Saga. Crucible of Worlds. I think this is one I have to let resolve. Interesting. No other play. So you have two lands in hand? I'm going to fetch to thin our deck a little bit. So you can see if I can find anything good with this Preordain. And if we do, we can Time Walk. Uh, I don't think we want the Sphinx, unfortunately. I will keep a Probe, though. Information is always good. Look at their top card. Or, I'm sorry, their hand, not their top card. Wasteland and... The Might Stone and the Weak Stone. When it enters the battlefield, choose one, draw two. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. And then make two colorless. Five mana artifact. They chose Crucible over this. We'll time walk, see if I can draw into anything good. We've definitely flooded a little bit this game. Take a draw. Another Hercules. Play the Volcanic. Pass the turn. They can make a construct here. And now they are making another construct. They go to their draw step. The Saga triggers. Let's see what they grab. Needle. They name Black Lotus. That doesn't work. We will Hercules recall them to save six damage. They can replay these artifacts. I th I'm going to consider countering the Crucible. Because if we don't, they can... Crucible wastes me out of this game. They drew Mox Chat for turn. Yeah. Spyglass. They name our key. That makes sense. And I'm going to counter the Crucible. So they have Needle, Mightstone, Wasteland in hand as their last three. There's the Needle. So we know their last two once again. Once again, they name Black Lotus with Needle. Does not work. There's the Wasteland. Goodbye, Underground Sea. Draw for turn. Okay, I like that. Let's look at the top. Might be a decent spot for the Saga, I'm unsure. Pass for now. They can use the Might Stone to draw two on their turn. And if they do that, that's three unknown cards. And I mean, they can cast it very easily with three open mana. Yeah, all right. They have their own saga. I'm not interested in keeping the saga on top of my deck anymore. That is the Might and Weak Stone. They will draw two. Mox Ruby and one unknown at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to clear the top of my deck. I don't want to play the Urza Saga War game. Let's hope that the top has something good. Spin. Is Tinker something good? Um... I think it might have a deterministic win here as well. Okay, it's not deterministic, but it's pretty close. I could also just Tinker Citadel. So the other line would be Vampiric Tutor, Flop Top for Breach. And then I have Black Lotus Ancestral 
I'm just going to tinker. Also, if I win via tinker, maybe our opponent will, uh, for the rest of their life, think that Needle on Lotus works. It's about that future equity. Sack the Manifold Key. Grab Citadel. Hold priority on Merchant Scroll. Let's look. Grab Mystical Tutor, I guess. Play Soul Ring. Mox Emerald. We'll play Saga for turn. Needle going down to nine. We'll name Wasteland. Needle. Let's name Urza Saga. Flop with the top. Because we played the Saga, we can no longer Mystical. I guess if I hit Hercules, I have infinite turns is an option. All right, so we're going to brainstorm going to four life. Sack the key. Guess I'll go to two. There's Breach, but I can't cast it because I'm at two. Brainstorm. And we hit Lotus Petal, so that's a win. Sweet. Put the two lands on top, I guess. Lotus Petal. Sacrifice the pedal for a red. Underworld Breach. And I win the match. We are 1-0. Four rounds left to go. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Round number two, we're facing Unban, Oko, and Lab. I would like to say absolutely not. I believe that the last time I faced this person that they were on bug midrange, but doesn't really the matchup. We can't afford to keep this hand. Okay. Uh, I'm willing to try this. We can get rid of the Breach. That's a Black Lotus. That's not cool. Yeah. I'm just getting destroyed here. Welcome to Vintage. <laughs> Why? Oh, geez. We know that they know the top two, so they could have put a Mox on top with the Brainstorm. They revealed Death Ray Shaman. What an insane start. We'll take a draw. Ay ay ay. Let's time walk. They're going to force time walk, sure. I'm always happy when people force time walk. Like, I don't think the card's that good. They play Wooded Foothills. Incoming Collector Roof. Yep. They have four in hand. See if we can draw some lands. Those are technically lands. There's a Saga. Pass the turn. Their start was just so much better than mine. All right. I've had enough this game. We can go to game two. No need to sit here and slowly draw the top two cards in my deck that are terrible. All right, next game. I think I want the Sphinx here. Definitely want the Bolts for the Oof. I don't... We probably want the Fluster. Can definitely get rid of the Hercules Recall. That leaves us at 61. Maybe Shave or Preordain. On the play for game two. Sure, I'll keep. They have kept their seven cards. Play Volcanic because it represents Pyroblast and Pass. We don't have one, but we want our opponent to think that we do. Wooded Foothills, and they will pass back. Misty Rainforest, pass the turn. Another Foothills. They grab a Trop. Is this a Collector Oof? I will respond with a Brainstorm. I just don't think we want Breach. We'll put the Ponder on top. And then I could uh, fetch here. I want red, red, so that I can guarantee kill their creature. Kill oof. Ponder. Hmm. I think I'm going to shuffle this. I am playing a little bit uh, conservatively here by choosing to leave up the Pyroblast, but I'm just not really interested in losing to a really good, like, Ancestral or whatever. Ooh, they have uh, Ren Strip. 
that makes uh, that my vampiric tutor play a little bit worse. We are in fact in trouble here. We have six cards in hand. We'll take a draw. Preordain. Okay. Probe you. Double force. Wow. Their hand is insane. We pitch Oko. We will Pyroblast the Force. They kept Time Lock Strip Mine. Now we draw three. We drew Needle for the Strip Mine, but it is a little bit late here. So they're going to get to blow up two of my lands. It looks like they're going to blow up both uh, red sources. So I'll be stuck with two cards I can't cast. And with uh, only two Volcanics in the deck, that is my last non-Ruby red source that isn't like a Lotus Petal or whatever. Okay. Needle. We have to name the strip here. Play Saga. Oh, come on. I think I'm out of this game unless I draw Black Lotus. I need to draw Black Lotus and our opponent needs to not have anything in hand. I guess if I draw Fetch Land, I can vamp for Lotus. Okay, so you're saying there's a chance. They can Renault here. And they did. That's a time walk. Death Ray Shaman, sure thing. They have two. I mean, this is my chance. I have to go for it. If they've got it, they've got it. Underground C. Vampiric Tutor. Grab Lotus. Take a draw. Sacrifice for red. Underworld Breach. They have one card in hand. I think I'm supposed to just pyro this. Because now they can't force of vigor or force of will. Wow. Can't believe I won that. Lucky. Should I be bringing in more needles? They are a Ren Oko deck. Maybe we board out the Citadel when we have Sphinx. And Mystical Tutor. Let's try this. On the draw for game three. Insanely powerful hand. A uh, little bit nervous though, due to the multiple Force of Vigors we saw in game number two. As well as Collector Roof. All right, Tropical Island. Ancestral, not what I wanted to see here. That's a bummer. Saga. Ruby. Black Lotus. Mox Pearl. Sapphire. I'm going to lead with the Ponder. We did find protection. And now I'm going to go get Ancestral. Target me. Counter the misstep. Ancestral. Not bad. Play top. Pass the turn. Strip mine. And I thought this might have been their play. Really happy about the bolt. Wow. Okay. Um... Assuming they don't have force, this is a win. We draw the breach. Grab volcanic. Lightning bolt. Underworld breach. Oh boy. And they just conceded. Yes! Get out of here, collector roof. No one likes you. We're two and oh, hell yeah. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number three, we're on the play. I still have no idea what any of our opponents are playing and I am definitely keeping this. Keep, 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 keep. All right. Underground Sea. Mana Crypt. And then we'll cast that Time Lock card. Go to our second turn where I will take three damage off Mana Crypt. It's just how magic goes. We'll auto yield to this trigger. I'll choose heads. Yep, like I said, take three. 
Brainstorm. Pretty good. Put back. And are we actually supposed to get rid of the Sapphire here? I think we are. Pass the turn. Ooh, not the best agent matchup. And it's Dredge. That's a hollow one. Chalice of the Void on zero. Yep. It's not like Narsa would have been amazing here either. But uh, we're definitely in a tough spot. Play the agent. Choose Tails this time. And we won the flip. Time Vault. Pass the turn. They get to dredge the Stinkweed. Yep. We lose three to the Creeping Chill. Now they go to their draw step. They get to dredge again. And they had double Narc Amoeba this time. We'll, we'll in return trigger the prize to Melgum to come back. Definitely in a tough spot here. They're attacking, which means that I can block. And their bridges will get exiled. Okay. Opposition agent's already better. Okay. Like, Tinker would probably be our best draw because it gets rid of Mana Crypt and then could get me key, but... I mean, we have to draw something or else I'm dead. They do have two Ickards in the graveyard, so next turn they have Lethal. Mana Crypt. Lost the flip on at 9, so they definitely have Lethal. It's all up to you, Preordain. Guess we'll keep this Preordain and hope to spike exactly key. Nope. Nope, that doesn't do it. All right, next game. So I can play the Underworld Breach here, but they still have a Chalice and play for my Mox Jet. And we don't have any other mana, so uh, they got me. Definitely want our Ley Lines. The Tabs, the Sphinx, the Needles. Maybe even this Fluster as well. Can definitely get rid of the Mental Misstep. In the past, I've boarded out the Breach combo, especially against the version that has Creeping Chill in it. I think that's just a fine move. I don't love Dress down here. I don't... I'm not crazy about Agent. Fire Blast is sort of hit or miss. They do have Force of Will in their deck, but there's not a whole lot of blue cards. We don't need the Hercules Recalls. Hmm. I think I'm going to do minus Citadel, minus one Pyro. Let's try this. Game two, we're on the play. Sure. Opponents on three cards. We're going to begin by revealing Leyline of the Void. We'll play Volcanic, Pearl, and Top. Pass the turn. They draw a card. Bizarre Baghdad. They activate it. A little bit surprised here. So they have two cards left in hand. Hollowed one. Hollowed one. Okay, so I am looking to find one of my... I mean, if you're going to mold the three and I open on Leyline, this is the exact start you want. I do have two Tabernacle that might be able to get me out of this sticky situation. Let's see if we can find one. Top. Well, I have a feeling we're casting this Preordain. Let's put those two cards we topped into on the bottom of our deck. One, two, and then we draw a random card. Another Saga. Let's spin the top. Hmm... We have to draw one of these next turn. I think we want to draw the Ponder. Play Saga. We're going to take 8 here going down to 12. It is possible that I just lose here to these Hollowed Ones. I believe I still want the Ponder. We'll draw that. Saga goes to 2. So my Saga would actually trade here with the Hollowed One. If I take the Ruby. I think I just need to be disciplined here and quit trying to dig for exactly one card when this might get me out of it. Play another Saga. And now I'm making 4-4 Constructs that can block this Hollowed One. You have a Grief. They swing in, we will make a Construct. Block. On their end step will top. See if I still want the cards in that order. I guess I didn't know about the Sphinx. I can actually just go get Lotus and put Sphinx into play. Is that better? I don't want to show them Sphinx. I mean, most lists have it, but I want to, I don't want to let them know that I do. And I feel like we can win this game with Constructs. 
We'll take a draw. We'll activate this to make a construct. And now we'll search. Grab Sol Ring. They have no cards in hand. Okay, so they just conceded to the construct. Good. Game three. Resubmit. This hand is insane. We don't have a blue source for the ancestral, but there's no chance that I mulligan this. They kept seven. Leyline of the Void. Bizarre Baghdad. They activate it. Serum Powder, Narc Amoeba, Icarid. They have five in hand. We have to be aware that they could upkeep Force of Vigor me. Oh no. I'm going to let it resolve. This is brutal. They take the Ruby, really? That's odd. Okay. Play the Saga. Pass the turn. Wasteland. So they're going for the Mana Denial plan. Sure. They still have three in hand. Take another draw step. Blasta. It's always fun to say cards like you're from Boston. Blasta. I love Detanka. I do not live in Boston. I live in upstate New York, but uh, I've played enough magic with people from Boston in my life that uh, I find it funny. So, deal. They activate Bazaar Baghdad. Bridge, Icarid, Bazaar. Three cards remaining. I'm going to let Hollow One happen. Okay. We have one card. Can I have a Tabernacle? Saga goes up to two. We draw another Preordain. Yikes. I mean, next turn we can get Black Lotus and make triple blue. So this is going to put me to 12. And they're passing. Two cards in hand. Come on, deck. Except this for colorless. Three blue mana. Ancestral Recall. Let's... Preordain? Time Vault Pyroblast. Neither one of those really does it here. We'll bottom both. Go to 10. Force Shambling Shell. So this is weird because I have the Vampiric Tutor, but I have to fetch in order to get the... Um... The Black Source. What to do? I think I'm going to Brainstorm. I hit Time Walk. Yes. Okay. I believe we have this now. Get rid of Fluster. Emerald? Could get rid of both Moxen. Get rid of the Emerald, I guess. Alright, so now we're going to play out the Flooded Strand. Go get the Underground Sea. Soul Ring. Pearl. Needle. Bazaar. And then Time Walk. And our upkeep will go to 7 life. So I could get Tabernacle here, or I can get Tinker for Sphinx. They'll both work. I think I'd like to start closing out the game, though. So we'll grab the Tinker. I'm at 7. Take a draw. Blue. Cast Tinker. Get rid of the Pearl. Sphinx of the Steel Wind. With Force Backup. Rio! I feel like I'm playing relatively well tonight. I mean, that last Vintage League got some of the rust off, and now I'm playing at a higher level. I like that. Let's see if we can keep the wins going. Match number four coming up. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round number four, we're on the play. Hmm. I don't love this. It's kind of weird. I'm going to take a mulligan. This, this is a hand. Keep. I think I'm going to bottom the breach. Key. So we're a mox away from turn two tinker with force back up. Gemstone mine. Are you on depths? Please give me a mox. Draw. Oh, pass. I could have upkeep Mystical for Ancestral, but I don't know if their deck is a blue deck. And if it is, I don't want to have to pitch for, uh, Tinker to Force. 
You have a green sun for one. Yeah. Have to worry about unconquerable force of vigor now. Mystical. Grab ancestral. Let's attempt to draw three. Well, I was never drawing that land. Um, preordain. I think we keep the demonic tutor on top of the deck. Uncounterable channel. Well then. Uh, I have to imagine this is an Eldrazi Titan. I just got wrecked. Yeah, you got me. Collector Roof, or not Collector Roof, uh, Alistair Shepard way too strong. Okay. Lightning Bolt coming in. Probably want Fluster. Don't need the Hercules Recall. Can probably take out the Pyroblasts. Maybe I'll leave in one blast. I don't know. We saw a blue land. Game two, we're on the play. Uh, so this hand needs a Black Lotus. I mean, I'll keep it, I think. Like, I don't even know how good this actually is. Play top. Once upon a time. They find all the Spirit Guide. And our upkeep will top. There's the pedal. That was actually an insanely good draw. Okay, feeling pretty good about this. Worldly Tutor. My top card is Fluster. We'll fetch. This gives me another card in Graveyard for Underworld Breach, which is why I'm interested in this play. So next turn I can go Breach, Pedal, Escape Pedal, Brain Freeze, and that wins. We play Botanical Sanctum, six cards in hand. We know one of which is Elvish Spirit Guide. Personal Tutor. For channel. Mom blue card, please. Hmm. What are the odds they mind break me? I'm gonna play pedal. If they mind break me, they mind break me. Okay. Replay the Lotus Pedal. Brain Freeze. Our shield is down for the breach train right now. Okay. We had fluster, that's good. Sacrifice. Replay the pedal. We have to remember that they're an Emrakul deck, so it's going to be very tough to brain freeze them out. It is possible, though. Mana Crypt. And the opponent conceded. Thank you. Game three. I don't know what I would name with Needle, and we saw Personal Tutor, so I'm going to board Pyro back in. Opposition Agent's very good against their deck if I can uh, actually cast it. We have Tinker, but our primary target's already in our hand. I also don't have mana to cast it. Mulligan. Wow, what a hand! Turn one breach combo with force backup. Don't mind if I do. Keep. Once upon a time. Collector Roof. Not very nice. Green Sun for zero, sure. Do we get to party? Black Lotus. Mox Ruby. Underworld Breach. Brain Freeze with Force Backup. <laughs> uh, yeah. Replay the Lotus. Sacrifice for blue. Brain Freeze. Remove the Force, I guess. More coming at us. We, are, we can also Lightning Bolt our opponent out. We don't have to Brain Freeze them out, but you can Brain Freeze them out if you really want to. We will play Black Lotus again. We have 23 cards left. Brain Freeze targeting me. Okay, so this will in fact deck me. And our opponent concedes. Oro. Pretty sweet. All right, let's go get that trophy match number five coming right up. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pinned comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match for the trophy. How about that? We are facing a vintage legend, Wizard 2002, who won a, an Eternal Weekend last year, 
with Dredge. So I mentioned Alex McKinley at the start of this video won the Friday night Eternal Weekend with my list. Wizard 2002, I believe, won the Saturday morning Eternal Weekend. So uh, we're on the draw here against a Bizarre deck. We've opened up quite the powerful hand. I'm going to try it out. Hope for the best. That is, in fact, a Bizarre Baghdad. They activate. Discards Amalgam, Force of Vigor, Icarid, five in hand. Oh, that's brutal. If you take my Black Lotus here, my hand is nothing. Yep, that's rough. And then next turn, they can Icarid, uh, Exiling the Grief, return prize to Amalgam. Take a draw. Okay, we had a blue source, that's good. Fetch. I'm going to grab the basic here because sometimes, I mean, you'll see a wasteland. They're usually in the board, but I don't want to risk a main deck wasteland. I think I'll ponder. Misstep your misstep. It was the only way that my misstep was ever going to be live. Ponder. I think we have to shuffle this. Shuffle, draw, time lock. I'm going to play my cards out due to... A possible Cabal Therapy. I realize that I could lose the Mana Crypt trigger and it's three damage, but I think it's worse if my Mana Crypt gets discarded. No Dredgers. So they have one card in hand. So they do get to bring back Prized Amalgam. And their last card in hand was another Bazaar. Wow. Pretty good. Come on, Tinker, please. Tails. Hey, we want to flip. Not what I asked for. Not even a little bit. Come on. Oh, and the Black Lotus is in the graveyard. Ah, oh, that's even worse. Preordain. So, I think I want both of these. Bizarre. S. They can't bring back the Icarid. So, they have prized Amalgam plus my Mana Crypt. Ooh, I can Pyroblast the Amalgam with the... Uh, the red source on top next turn but then that makes it so they can bring back the icarid interesting and our opponent has timed out so uh maybe they got called away had to use the bathroom i don't know but we got a 5-0 trophy pretty sweet let's take a look at the deck list so one of the big things about the deck list today was we were running two opposition agent when you looked at our matchups we had dredged twice we had shops. We had a weird channel deck with a bunch of tutors in it. And then we had the Rug Xerox or Rug Tempo deck as well. Or I guess it was a four color deck. They had Death Rite, even though we never saw any other black cards. So when we looked at the matchups, we didn't really have the matchups for Opposition Agent to shine. We didn't face Paradox Lock and we didn't face Blue Tinker, which are the two matchups you really want this card for. Also Doomsday. So we just missed that part of the metagame. So I'm not going to make any judgments on Opposition Agent yet. I think the theory for it being good is still there. And I would still run this same 75 if I ran uh, entered Eternal Weekend uh, this upcoming weekend. I still don't think I'm going to be able to play, but in case I do, this is the list that I would play, this 75. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're going to rent a deck for Eternal Weekend, uh, do it through Card Hoarder. Also, click that affiliate link down below. Uh, that way it tracks that you rented it through me. I would greatly appreciate that. I mean, if you're going to play my list, you could at least give me that affiliate link goodness. Am I right? And uh, as a special treat, let's open up all 11 chests. Anything good? Doesn't look like it. Ooh, we got a White Plume Adventure. Hell yeah. It's got to be some money. Displacer Kitten? Okay, I think uh, we did pretty well here. Season Pyromancer used to be worth money. I don't think it is anymore. But uh, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, have a great day. Keep storming. 5 -oh! Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.